Hello everyone and welcome back to your R for Finance tutorial. Um, today we're just going to be getting stock data for a portfolio of assets um, instead of just a single asset. So I got rid of all that uh, code we had before and I also cleared the environment window right here. To do that just press this broom right here. Beware because it's going to uh, clear all your objects out that you may need later. Um, so I'm just going to click no and to clear your console just uh, press control L. Also uh, to comment out a block, I forgot to say this, uh, control shift and why am I blanking out? C. <laughs> C. That's the comment out a block, really useful. Um, so the first thing that we're going to want to do, um, let me minimize my recording window for a sec. Um, the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a vector of, uh, of tickers. So what we're going to do is just say tickers equals um, and then we're gonna use C right here so that's gonna combine all these tickers together basically so that's gonna be MMM for 3M and we're gonna use Citigroup and I'm just picking random tickers here uh, and we're gonna use Apple and I don't know IBM and Amazon since it's everyone's favorite company right <laughs> So uh, this is going to be what a vector is, and I accidentally put an equal sign here. So this is an assignment operator again, um, and this C is combining all these together. Um, so this is what a vector is in R, and we're just going to load quant mod first, and we're going to load these next, or make sure these lines are ran. Okay, um, so that's good right there. And the next thing we're going to do is basically create an XTS object. Um, an XTS object is an extensible time series object, and you're going to see it right here. They're wicked useful for dealing with time series data, especially stock data. That's why R is so awesome. Um, so what we're going to say is uh, first, we're going to initialize uh, our variable for uh, our portfolio. So we're going to say port prices or let's say portfolio prices and set this equal to null for now and what we're going to do next is for make a for loop for ticker in tickers and what are we gonna say let's copy this right here actually hold on one second copy this variable right here the reason we're setting it null is because we're gonna fill it with all of our data um, so Portfolio prices, and then we're going to say uh, C bind, and then to what? Portfolio prices, okay, and then what are we going to say after that? And we're going to say get symbols, we used that last time, remember that? We're going to say ticker, so this is going get to get the data for the, each individual symbol, and then from M date. I forgot to put the equal sign there, M date. Okay. And we can put a bunch of other optional arguments for the get symbols parameters right here, but all I'm gonna do right now is say uh, I'm gonna say auto dot assign equals F. And that's the same concept that was we were using before. Nothing new there, making sure it's assigned to the right variable. Um, and after that, all we want is the close column. Um, and yeah, that should be it for that. Um, let's run this real quick and see if we have any errors. Okay, no errors here. And what we can do is print this to the screen. Um, oh, before I do that, this is our XTS object. So this is what an extensible time series object is. So right now we have a data frame full of uh, prices from 2001. Just, again, unbelievably easy to do an R. Um, way easier than any other in my opinion. Now, this this method is uh, pretty easily imp implemented in Python as well but I, I think it's a uh, with with without the pandas library too it's still you know just as easy um, pandas is in Python you can do something similar to this but yeah so what we want to do now um, is let's print actually now we just saw it in the global environment so we don't need to do anything else what I want to do though is if you see right here um, I want to neaten these labels up a little bit, so I just want them as a ticker. So the way we're going to do that is, uh, so we're going to say call names, and then actually no, we're not going to assign that. We're going to say of the individual data frame. So this is the data frame we're working with. So portfolio 
prices, okay? And then what are we gonna set them to? Our ticker list. And be careful here, cause you're gonna get uh, an error that pops up if uh, your elements basically in the array are unequal to the amount of elements that are actually in the XTS object in terms of your column headers. So let's just set this really quick. And let's print to the screen for the hell of it. And then portfolio prices, run that line and let's scroll up uh, and boom we have it right there uh, now what we can do next is calculate the returns for the data frame so uh, there's actually quite a few ways to do this um, we'll start off with the simplest way um, because it can get actually a little bit more complex if you're dealing with different frequencies in terms of monthly data or weekly data um, but for the most part uh, all we're going to be doing right now is using the ROC function like we did before to calculate returns and we'll be doing discrete returns um, so where we can start is by converting actually we don't even need to convert this to an XTS object because it already is so um, what we can say right now is uh, portfolio I don't know why I can't type portfolio return okay we'll assign this to a variable and what are we going to say? We can say ROC, and I'll show you a few different ways to do this. And what are we going to put in here? Uh, our portfolio prices. And I should probably make this plural because it's going to be a, a data set or a um, data frame of returns. So we're going to say portfolio prices, okay? And then we're going to specify the type. And this is going to be uh, discrete, which are arithmetic returns. Remember, log is continuous. Uh, and what are we going to do after that? Nothing but run this bad boy. So let's run it. Um, there should be one of... Hold on one sec. I probably misspelled some... Oh, yeah. I misspelled it. Run that again. And then we'll check this out. Portfolio returns. And boom, we have the returns right here. And it already accounts for the NA values for the for the last one so that actually ends up being pretty useful as well um, yeah so this would be one simple way to do it we could also do it uh, where we can set it to the same variable and we can say daily return and then we can specify port folio return zo. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, portfolio prices, whoopsie. Um, and I'm gonna show you what may go wrong with this method in a sec. Uh, so we're gonna print this to the screen, print portfolio returns, make sure everything's selected. And as you notice, we only have basically an aggregate column right here. And the reason being is because um, we do need this as an individual XTS object. Um, and basically, if we were to do this with, because this is only one method, we could also do monthly return, and it would return the exact same thing. So this would just be in terms of monthly returns. So as you can see right here, this is just by month, um, but it's only aggregate. Um, let's say we theoretically want to see everything in terms of returns for each stock just like this. And we can actually do that, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, so this tutorial might be getting a little long, too. Let me check the time really quick. Um, I, I may make this just 15 minutes or so. Yeah, screw it. Why not? So, yeah, what we're going to do now is end up using the uh, period return. And this is pretty much the same thing. And just use this in a loop. And this is where dplyr is going to come in. So we're going to use the library uh, keyword and then dplyr. Make sure it's imported. Okay, cool. Um, we can get rid of this. I'll keep this right here. Um, method 1. Of calculating returns okay and let's go into the next method so let's say uh, we have the same array of tickers and what we're going to do now 
is be actually using the dplyr library. So what I'm going to say is, uh, let's say portfolio returns set that equal to um, we're going to use our vector here, so tickers, and then we're going to use uh, it's called a I believe a forward pipe operator. So this is what it's going to look like. And it looks absolutely ridiculous at first, but the reason we're doing this is to essentially chain two functions together. Um, so we're going to use L apply right after, and this is going to be applied to the entire data frame. That's pretty much what L apply is doing. Um, a little bit different than apply or S apply. I'm not going to get into L apply in, in detail right now because you can either use S apply, L apply, M apply. There's a bunch of them. I'll go over the differences later, but basically just know that we're doing this or operating over an entire data frame. Um, so what we're going to say is function x, okay, and this is going to be the function we're going to be declaring right here for every column basically in the data frame. That's where x is going to come in. So function x get symbols with x and then auto dot sign equals f, okay, and then make sure that syntax is okay. And then the next full pipe operator we're going to be using l apply again okay and then again function x and then what are we applying monthly return we could do monthly return or a period return monthly return is I think the exact same thing as the period return function um, with a monthly argument put in so uh, yeah all we're gonna do is um, AD for the actually no there's no adjusted column um, within I forgot we're not working with Yahoo Finance but I'm actually gonna leave that in there and see what happens um, and then AD of X I think it's just gonna default to the column itself um, and let's see what happens oh it actually did well wow. I thought it was, I thought I had to change that AD um, the reason being is because AD usually refers to Yahoo Finance uh, with adjusted close because Google Finance doesn't have that. Um, it's only just the close column, but I guess it worked. <laughs> Let's check. Uh, so print. I'm just going to copy this in. Portfolio returns. Um, and you're going to see what we have to do next in order to get the monthly ones in there. Um, so yeah, we have, here's one, okay. So this would be for Amazon. So two, four, yep, five. We have all five there. So this would be for Amazon. And you see it's not all joined in a data frame. So what we have to do now is merge them all together. So uh, I'm going to keep this right here. And so the way we're going to do that is uh, we're going to say, um, first off, assign it to a variable. So let's do portfolio returns and then what we're going to say is uh, do dot call okay and what this is going to be allowing us to do again is merge all of them together so merge and then what do we want to merge um, let you know what we may need to do you might need to change this to another variable um, so what I'm going to say is um, final underscore returns I'm going to sign that portfolio returns I'm going to put right here and I'm gonna see if this works. Um, uh, oh wow, it did work. Okay, so um, yeah, all we need to do now is change the column headers because this just looks awful. Uh, but yeah, we have monthly returns for the entire uh, data uh, data set, basically in the in the data frame that we had before in terms of just prices. Uh, so it's the same thing as before. We're just gonna copy this down. Um, paste this in, set the call names, and let's see if it ran correctly. Uh, here we go. All right, and there we are. Um, we have everything set, and we can do this. I think this will work for weekly. Let's try it out. Weekly return quant mod. Same thing as a uh, period return again. And let's see if it works and we should obviously get more data spit back um, let me check right here 
Yeah, that looks like a weekly return to me. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much how we get different uh, period returns in terms of a portfolio. And we have a simple method up here, but it's really not going to do as much use if we want to get it for different time frequencies. So, yeah, I think uh, I'm running a little bit long on time right now. Um, I'm only 15 in. So the last thing I'm going to do is let's say theoretically we want to export this to a CSV. Uh, so the way we would do that is write or export this XTS object or write dot CSV, okay, and as dot data dot frame because that's what we have. Um, and what do we want to write? Uh, final underscore returns, okay, and then after that. We're going to say the name of the file or give the name of the file right here. So what do we want to name it? Um, example returns.csv and we're going to enter that and check our OS example returns.csv. Um, oh, that was just, if you guys didn't see that, that was just a moving average thing in Excel. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, these are all our weekly returns right here, exported. Get out of here. Um, so yeah, that's basically the gist of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial on getting uh, portfolio data and calculating returns as well. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of it and I hope you guys learned a thing or two and thanks for all the support and have a good day.